let's make sense of these allegations first. I know he's not one of the, uh, he's just one out of a lot of other big, big names, uh, you know, that have been involved in this, yet a <laughs> Mephiele mm -hmm. under, you know, the radar again. Yeah. What do you make of all this? Well, um, the arrests, detention, and prosecution of Godwin Emefele mm. is, um, is going to open kind of worms. Mm. I'm not surprised that um, somebody is bold enough, or maybe an organization is bold enough to raise a petition. To raise a petition. And that person has also copied the special investigator, yeah, Obaze. Obaze. And the person is categorical mm. about that very issue. The movement of foreign exchange to the tune of three point something billion, billion dollars. in one transaction, that is one transaction, to an individual, not at the prevalent rate, the rate. but at a rate that is ridiculous. And when you also look at the commissioning of the Dangote refinery, a mm. Mephele who has been, I mean, he's been doing the kind of um, maneuvering mm. since um, the Naira, since, yeah. okay, since his aspiration, yeah. the Naira change, yeah. the allegation that he was funding terrorism, exactly. and the way his security was changed, now military were protecting him, the mm. SS were no longer protecting at him and point. all of that at some point. Yeah. And he spoke at that um, commissioner of the commissioning in court mm. of the refinery, of the rem of the which refinery. has remained uncompleted. <laughs> he said, they thought we couldn't do it. We have done it. And some of us were asking, who are the we? Who are the we? This is supposed to be a, a private, private refinery. refinery. Started a few years ago. And it's now commissioned to start production almost immediately. So the question mm. arose when he went further yeah. to add that Dangote has refunded 70% of the loan federal government gave to him. 70%. According to the CBN According government. According to the CBN governor. And the refinery has not even started working. The refinery has not started working? Where did he get the money? How much loan did you give to the Dangote. private person to fund the biggest refinery almost in the world uh, the, and the, then the biggest modular refinery yes and then uh, what are we talking about the issue of the government's investment in it just 20 percent mm. so i raised the statement put a question mark mm. on the transparency of the even the ownership of, of Dan refinery, Kuti refinery. No, but it has never been hidden. We hear that he is a majority stakeholder. It's not hundred percent his own. There are stories. There is also mm. a, a, a possibility, not even a possibility. We've also heard that a significant fraction of it is owned by government. Twenty percent. Government have been clear on that twenty percent. Exactly. But then, how is although Dante is, is the controller, is, yeah. he has controlling shares. Those that have done some background checks that have said that they have not been to see other investors in that refinery it's possible yeah they have not been able to see them mm. through the records here and there but that's not even the issue the issue is that a mefele mm. shot himself in the foot by that statement. by that statement which is subject to investigation so i want to commend uh a while or what is his name the person that um raised the petition, the, the petition because there's no two ways about it what has been going on in this country Mm. over some years now calls for proof it calls for very serious proof because we can mm. for whatever reason continue to be deceiving ourselves that we are running a country which we hope to work whereas some persons have taken us for a ride i i i, I commend uh, the petitioner all right we are hello and welcome to the channel Sticking with MFLA for now, more details have been revealed on what necessitated the decision of the embattled, suspended governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Godwin MFLA, to opt for a plea bargain in the alleged 6.69 billion naira fraud case instituted against him. 
Recall that Nigerian News had earlier reported that Emefiele allegedly opted for a plea bargain with the federal government in the charges against him. Sources privy to the development said Emefiele and his co-accused Sadat Yaro have opted for a plea bargain policy to settle with the government. Nigerian News recalls that the federal government filed a 6.9 billion naira 20 count charge bordering on alleged breach of procurement laws and contract inflation on the suspects. However, the arraignment scheduled for Wednesday by a high court of the Federal Capital Territory was not stated on the court's course list. Similarly, MFLA and his co-defendant, Yaro, were not in court, and neither was any unusual security presence observed around the court premises. The lawyers of the parties involved were also not present in court. Sources said to be in the know revealed that the arraignment was shifted at the instance of the detained CBN governor to enable all parties to come to an agreement on the plea bargain. It was learned that as part of the out-of-court settlement terms, MFLA would forfeit any illicit funds and questionable assets traced to him, but it could not be confirmed if any illegal fund has been linked to him. He will also step aside as the CBN governor to enable the government to appoint a substantive holder. It was also gathered that MFLA and his relations would withdraw all matters in court. According to the nation, some highly placed Nigerians interceded for MFLA to make the government accept the plea bargain offer. The turn of events on his trial was said to have legal and political tones to avoid anything which may have negative impacts on the economic agenda of the administration of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Its officers disclosed that MFLA was worried about the likely dragging of his trial for years, adding that the suspended CBN boss and his family members weighed all options and settled for a plea bargain. The source said, MFLA has considered all options and chose out-of-court settlement, which may lead to his freedom if the terms are agreeable to both parties. He felt he may face multiple trials, and he doesn't want to go the whole hog of being in and out of court, for instance, since the time he was arrested, it has been difficult to verify his assets, so he has a code of conduct case pending. But the plea bargain appeared the smartest option for him. He is expected to forfeit any suspicious cash and assets traced to him by law enforcement and anti graft agencies. That's the news, guys. Thanks for listening. Until next time, bye.